she's crying to me, Cry. and then the two of you are making out. You're interpreting it wrong. You interpret everything wrong. Do you not understand that? You interpret the world wrong. So shut up! Hey y'all, it's Renegade, and it's time to spill more reality in another reality retrospective. Usually, I'd take an unnecessarily deep dive and give a spoiler-free review, but no, no, not today, scene. I have words for the challenge All-Stars 4, and I've decided to take a different approach to this review because I am in no mood to hide spoilers, so this is your last chance to stop now if you have not watched this season. So, we have to start out with the fact that when it comes to the challenge, I've always viewed it more as a guilty pleasure show, more so than one of the top tier reality shows like Survivor, Big Brother, or Amazing Race. But over the last few years, you can tell that the challenge has made lots of changes in an attempt to really cement itself as America's fifth sport. Well, I'm still not sure what the first four sports are, I don't think anyone can question that the challenge features some of the most intense and grueling tests for their contestants. With the success of rolling up the intensity of the challenge overall, naturally this led to the challenge adopting its own Marvel Cinematic Universe and branding out with tons of spin-off series, including Champs vs. Stars, the Paramount Plus World Championship Series, and finally, the Challenge All-Stars, which attempts to separate itself from the mainline series as a way to embrace the legacy of those who built the franchise and may not be able to hang with the incredible athletes of the challenge proper. But here's where the enigma comes in for me here is that while there is an attempt to separate itself from the highly athletic challenge, production never truly pulls the trigger on this concept entirely from my perspective. So while we have one of the strongest casts in the history of the challenge, the development and continuation of some of the most engaging storylines the show has had to offer to date, and dare I say one of the best soundtracks ever in a TV show ever? Uh, we also end up with a format that never truly commits to what it wants to be, and we end up with possibly one of the most convoluted, boring, and asterisk-worthy finales in not only the history of the challenge, but perhaps even the history of reality TV as everything we've come to know about the show's format just completely unravels in the endgame, and it's not something that we're not used to here in the challenge. I mean, let's go ahead and go back to the Challenge USA for probably what is the worst finale that I have ever seen in my entire life, but you know what? Challenge All-Stars for is trying to take the, the cake here too. And while I love the cast, the boot order this season is absolutely horrendous as well. Not to mention, while everything else is alright, we end up with two of the worst human beings ever in Laurel and Nicole, who have decided to rekindle their relationship much to the detriment of anyone who wants to enjoy the show because, spoiler alert, these two last for the entire season and we're literally left with the storyline that sucks up far too much screen time. I'll be honest, I don't particularly like Laurel as she seems extremely narcissistic and entitled, but I can't help but respect her legacy as one of the strongest female challenges competitors that we've ever had, but I simply cannot stand Nicole whatsoever, and you take all these toxic qualities of Laurel and just multiply them by 10 and you get Nicole, and now you combine the two together and you end up with a relationship that not only do I not care about, but just made me cringe having to see the toxicity happen in real time, and you know, to each their own, if you enjoy these two, you're more than welcome to, and it's not to say anything of them as people necessarily, more so as their presence on this show, because I do understand they are both great competitors, but that doesn't necessarily mean I need to see their relationship from every single moment of the game. You know, there are plenty of other amazing, amazing stars in this cast. We could have gone to them. But, you know, while I did enjoy most of the season, sans this horrible relationship, like I said, it all comes falling apart in the end, but, you know, let's go back to the beginning and do a short retrospective as to why the Challenge All-Stars 4 ultimately will end up as one of my least favorite seasons of this year, and possibly of all time. The season begins with TJ giving us a history lesson in the challenge, before proclaiming that each and every member of this cast is truly an all-star. I mean, I don't think that's necessarily true, but you know, we get a fun retro-style Quentin Tarantino movie intro to the season's cast, including, or should I say in other words, starring, Brad as the beard, Car Maria as the Lone Star, Steve as the Hand Model, Rachel, Tina, and Veronica as the BFFs, Leroy and Killa Cam as the Power Couple, amongst many others. PJ reveals the season is not just about excelling in the challenges, but building and forming relationships, and it is set up so anybody can win, which is our first indication this format will struggle to find itself, and it's like, no, 
Not anybody should be able to win the challenge, TJ. <laughs> Just saying. After going back into the house and having a get-to-know-you party, the real game begins the next morning as TJ reveals the twist of the season, the stars. To be eligible to compete in the final challenge, players must possess a star, with only three stars originally available for each gender. The stars will be initially awarded to the top three players of each gender from the first challenge. The winners of the elimination rounds can steal a star for themselves if they do do not already possess one. If elimination winners already possess a star, then they must steal the star from a player of the same gender they stole it from. In an additional twist, the winners of the daily challenges are immune from having their stars stolen during the episode the challenge occurs in. We also learn that the challenge will have a certain number of last place players or teams that will form the losing group who are at risk for elimination, while everyone else will form the middle group who will decide which two members of the losing group will face off in the arena's elimination challenge. I'll be honest, I love the format, and I thought it was really interesting and refreshing that there was a lot of strategy around the stars. At, at least I will say I enjoyed it until we learned what the stars were actually really for at the end of the day, but, you know, we'll save that rant for later, because y'all, oh no, you know it's coming. <laughs> and also at the same time, too, what are with these names? The winning group, the losing group, the middle group. I'm like, okay, where is the creativity? Okay, whatever. Anyway, the first challenge is a race to match star-shaped puzzle pieces on boxes while making their way up the hill. The first male and female player to fit all eight puzzle pieces and raise their flag to the top of the hill wins, and the top three players of each gender will receive stars. The last four players from each gender will, fin uh, will finish to form the losing group. It's not a bad first challenge. Personally, it seems rather equitable to match, you know, endurance with puzzles, and there is some tension as all the stars are up for grabs this round. Ultimately, Cara, Maria, and Brad win, with Rachel, Avery, Adam, and Brandon also becoming star holders, but their stars are at risk for after elimination as none of the players vulnerable have stars, so they can't have them taken themselves so they must be taken from a star holder, which kind of sucks for Adam and Brandon since they don't really have much of a chance to save their stars since it's the first men's day. Now, the moment I saw Tyree on the cast, I was like, oop, this guy's going to be out in the first three episodes since I'm pretty sure his record time on the show was five episodes, so I'm not surprised as he and outsider Steve are quickly singled out from a losing group of men to go into elimination. And the elimination is actually pretty good as, you know, it's a mix of strategy, endurance, as well as physicality as they have to battle to grab balls with stars on them out of a pool with a bunch of other balls that are misleading them. It requires the players to focus and keep on their toes, and ultimately Steve's strategy to hide all of the balls he finds and put them into uh, like a little hiding spot he has, and one by one take them out at the end, literally saves him in a neck and neck elimination. So, well I gotta say, I expected this result out of Tyree, and ultimately I don't think the season loses anything with him going first. I gotta say, I feel bad that he generally just takes such a beating in this show that Perhaps maybe it's just, you know, not for him, but if he keeps trying, let's hope he could at least last half of the season next time. Now, episode 2 was a dramatic one, and while it's good TV, it did leave me with a bit of an icky feeling in my mouth at the end of it. First off, let's talk about the positive, because the daily challenge was fun. They're split into groups of four and are suspended in an RV, having to listen to a radio show with hints on it as it spins to the ground. Once on the ground, they then have to use the clues to open luggage with puzzle pieces and then assemble a road rule style logo puzzle. Where my fun ended though is Nicole and Laurel get paired in the same group, which obviously has to happen immediately because editors want me to be miserable immediately, and we learn here that the relationship didn't end well and they cannot be bothered to talk to each other, yet it seems like this is the exact opposite case as they cannot do anything but talk to each other. The fact that they both literally have the same mindset on this shows just how terribly toxic they both are, but for whatever reason people like Jay and Tony keep pushing these girls to communicate and work together, which is like you, you are all the reason why we can never have nice things on this show, y'all. Things continue to get even way more negative as Ayana, Miss Salad Thief, has decided she wants Janelle out for whatever reason. Maybe she sees her as a threat. I don't really know. It's not really explained where this vendetta comes from, but she goes out of her way to slander Janelle and twist her words to the other contestants. 
Apparently, there was even a huge fight that was edited out of this show between Ayana and Janelle, as well as Brandon, Cam, and Leroy, where Ayana questions Janelle's blackness and called her racist, which, as someone who is biracial myself, it's very triggering because to have another black person say that you're not acting black enough when you're just being yourself is all sorts of toxic. But did we really expect anything else out of Salad Slaying Ayana here? I mean, after all, all of the drama here, Janelle decides she's too grown for the child's antics and notes herself right out of the competition, which I don't blame her for doing at all. I, I definitely have a lot of love for Janelle here. There will be multiple other seasons for her to possibly come on here without someone like Ayana here, and she's generally been all of, you know, more of the more reasonable people we've seen on this show, so I think she could actually find a lot of success on the show if she's willing to put up with this bullshit, but the challenge isn't exactly known to not be petty, so she best remove herself in the classiest way possible, and I respect that. At the same time, my girl Tina benefits from all of this now because she has no one to face off against in elimination after a hilarious scene earlier this episode where Tina attempts to strong arm Avery to no avail. Tina gets her revenge by stealing Avery's star and becoming the first star holder to get her star for doing absolutely nothing, which honestly, that's got to be the most Tina thing ever and just the best way that I could see her ever progress in this this uh, competition is to possibly make the final by doing absolutely nothing. Made me cackle so hard, but of all people, Tina now has the possibility of sitting in a final, and tell me why, again, I would be so here for this. Our third episode begins with the sad departure of Tony as he leaves to attend for a family emergency, and it's pretty sad because I think he could have done really well in this format. I don't really have too much else to say. Because, you know, Tony didn't really do too much on this season, but his departure is the unfortunate catalyst that allows Nicole to find yet another excuse to progress her relationship with Laurel as she cries to her for comfort, which is just like, ew, stop, please. It's just so forced, so cringe at this moment. Y'all know what you're doing, and I just wanted to stop. So this episode's daily challenge is also honestly pretty lame as it's just dominoes but make them heavy and put them in teams and it's also sad that cyrus literally gets put into the game to replace tony only to just be thrown into elimination immediately with his contemporary kefla now the women though know how to bring the drama as ayana is now in the hot seat when brandon exposes she wants cam and leroy out of the competition and when Brandon denies he said anything to Ayana, she calls out Jasmine, which sets Jasmine off, and it's like, oop, Ayana, you are messing with the wrong people right now. Uh, the vote also causes some drama between Cam and Car Maria, as Cam wants Ayana gone and wants to send in Rachel. Just because Rachel would be able to send her home. But Cara can't do that because she literally just made a deal, probably like a scene or two before this, to protect Rachel since they have stars and the star holders need to protect each other. Cam feels, based on this vote, that Cara is not supporting her, and Cara must be against her then. To be fair, Cara Maria doesn't play this well and should have just voted with the majority because Rachel was going in anyway, so why fuck up your relationship with Cam? And this really ends up being a turning point in the game for Cara Maria because I, well, I kind of think Cam maybe might be taking this a little too personally as well, as I generally think this is the best tactic to, you know, just to not burn bridges. Even if you know that person is against you, like, let them think that you're on your side and then get them later. Instead, Cam is just like, no, you are dead to me now, Cara, and it's like, okay, Cam. A little dramatic, but otherwise, Cam is basically the queen bee in the house right now, and she's giving me everything I need. She is the strategic focal point of everything. She's giving the best confessionals, and at this point, I think I'm probably rooting for her and Leroy to finally get their win. And again, things are going well as Cam gets her way, regardless of what Cara Maria wanted, and and Ayana goes into elimination against Rachel. And again, Clara Maria, why didn't you just, just do it? You're not losing anything by sending Rachel in. And ultimately, like, you know, I, I said, this is where all the trust for Kara. And I think the detriment here is the fact that we now have Laurel on the other side, who is making good friends with Cam. And it's probably getting in the ear now, and as far as things go for Kara, you know, this is probably, like, one of her last really, really big chances that she had to really stay with the group. 
Unfortunately, the elimination challenge was, you know, actually it was pretty good. They have to compete in a rather physical head-to-head matchup to push a ball through a tube with their competitor on the other side of the ball, pushing against them. Uh, Kivla really proves himself in this elimination and dominates Cyrus. And as quickly as he entered the game, he leaves, which, you know, are for the course for Cyrus, sadly, on these recent challenges. He was one of my favorite OGs, but honestly, he sadly just, he just doesn't really have great challenge luck or skill. I don't know. He's kind of like Tyree, and then I just kind of always expect him to go out first, so seeing them as the first two men to go, not that surprised. Um, now, in the women's side here, Rachel dominates Ayana as well, and in a very safe mood, just decides to transfer the star from her BFF, Tina, to her other BFF, Veronica, which ends the episode with a hilarious scream from Tina and continues to make me love the dynamic between these three, like to the point where they need a Mean Girls take a vacation for episode spinoff like Paris and Nicole's Simple Life, but make them older. I would live. Now, to speak a little bit on Ayana, I gotta laugh because her narrative is so delusional from start to finish, but I think that delusion is what I kind of appreciate about her as well. If this is truly what she is like in person, though, well, and which I mean, I think it could be just based off of what she did the last time she was on the show, then I see why, you know, people would rather quit than play with Ayana because she's a lot to deal with. Her presence is absolutely chaotic and so destructive, and while in almost any group I wouldn't mind this, you know, I really like this female cast. It's very super strong outside of a couple people, and I'd rather her go now instead of taking out one of my favorites, although at the end of the day, my favorites lift anyway, so I guess Ayana could have stayed, uh, but whatever. Um, I still think Ayana is a great mother. I think she is really trying to do everything for her kids to do the right thing, but something about this competition, though, I think she gets a little amped up and starts doing some crazy-ass shit, and maybe for the camera, I don't know, but you know, <laughs> at least you didn't eat anybody's salad this time, so that was episode three, and that was the, the end of Miss Ayana's short little arc here. Now, episode four, I was kind of like, eh, you know, as it sees Laurel and Nicole officially become nice-nice with each other as the house turns against Cara Maria, while Tina continues to suck at politicking, which makes me smile because she makes me laugh. Now, Tina is unable to save her BFF Rachel from getting sent in as Jasmine makes her move to take out Cara Maria. I won't lie, Cara does not handle the news well at all and does kind of start acting like a victim, but it also seems very clear all the strong women are going to be targets, which they kind of always end up do being in most of these kind of reality competition shows, so I can't really blame her for being upset knowing this is likely her life in the game moving forward, but also still, it's not a very good look though, Kara, especially to the rest of the group. Now, this episode's daily challenge is also pretty good, with the daily being a, a group challenge to a not themselves while hanging from the side of a moving truck, but the elimination challenge was definitely a letdown is neither of these women are really great at you know axe throwing and it's just kind of not really that exciting to watch like i definitely wish we got a better challenge for these two heavyweights instead of just watching them miss for 10 minutes until Kara finally beats rachel and gives the star to jasmine in order to put the target on her back or as she would say the stargate um, questionable move from Kara, I would probably put it on another strong female, maybe like Laurel, maybe like Nicole, um, but you know, I guess throwing it on Jasmine too also is, does the same exact opposite effect, because now you have someone who's so weak that it makes it just so easy to kind of take their star from her, and I don't mean weak as per se, but you might... Jasmine has not had the great challenge history here, let's be real. Um, at the same time, too, I'm definitely bummed to see Rachel exit the game here, but with all of my favorites, again, basically being targets at this point, I see no way of escaping this. At this point, this boot order is going to be horrible, and that's one huge blow to the season. Rachel always seems to be one of the first strong women targeted, and that sucks because this is like the first challenge she's been in in a long time, but, you know, maybe Rachel can train me to make my eventual debut on the Challenge 42, Challenges vs. Podcasts, where I'll likely have my back broken by CT in Episode 3, and Cyrus will laugh at me. Episode 5 continues the Laurel and Nicole time suck as they continue to get gross and suck focus from all of the screen time, as it seems like they're kind of back together because they keep flirting, but behind Laurel's back, Nicole is also saying she's not really interested, so now it looks like she's kind of leading Laurel on. They have some gross cuddle session at night too, which includes someone's legs up on someone's shoulders, which, I mean, I don't know, that's not the way I cuddle, but okay. Now, <laughs> you know, they also do it in a room with 
bunch of other people, which I think is one of the nastiest things ever that these people do on this show all the time, too, which is like, y'all are so scandalous. Like, get, go to a bathroom, find some privacy. Don't be doing this shit out in the middle of the open. Like, that's so, that is so wrong. Like, there is someone sleeping, like, two feet from you. Like, that is disgusting. Anyway, Nicole realizes things are escalating too quickly, and thankfully, at this point, pushes Laurel away, which causes Laurel to go cry to Cara Maria, and I'm thankful at this point, because I'm just like, please... Please, Kara, talk sense into Laurel. Make Laurel hate Nicole again, and please just end the storyline now. Sadly, doesn't happen. But this is also the episode where Kara Maria's relationship with Cam and Brandon officially disintegrates. But it makes me like Leroy a little bit more here for at least being the mature one out of this group, as they just cannot get past this whole situation where... It, Car is upset that Brandon did not support her last round and ended up sending her in. And she also thinks that Cam is taking the situation and the vote with the Ayana situation far too personally, which I agree with the Cam part. The Brandon part, apparently, like, they don't actually really talk outside the show. Car Maria apparently has one of the worst, probably, like, political games and, and social games ever, I guess, outside the show. So that that's not really anything I could speak to because I don't know what happens in their interactions outside the show. But, you know, if you're going to be playing a game where there's a bunch of pre-gaming, you might want to talk to your friends maybe once a year or so instead of leaving them hanging, you know, for like 10 years at a time, Car, Like, that's a little awkward. Um, now, the Daily Challenge is also a lot of fun where they do a callback to Duel 2's bobblehead bobsled. And they have to chase down TJ down a bobsled track while also grabbing bags of water to replenish that that leaks out of their tube that starts leaking once TJ reaches the bottom of the course. Now, ultimately, Cara Maria's fight with Brandon and Cam comes back to haunt Brandon and Leroy, too, when they're both sent into elimination after placing in the losing group by Cara Maria herself. And Leroy wins in a come-from-behind victory in a kind of meh elimination challenge where they have to navigate via balls through a hanging maze and into five spots in the middle. And the episode ends as Leroy gets his star from Adam, who has the only unsafe star from the men, which will be a trend moving forward here. Now, Brandon was doing pretty well and with the daily challenges, and I, I actually enjoyed his relationship with Cam and Leroy, but to be honest, I wasn't too invested in him, other than just as an alliance partner for the power couple, which, you know, sadly leaves Leroy without his meat shield, and that's really kind of all I have to say on Brandon there. So 6, Karma Maria, features another Steve segment, which have become the funniest side stories here, and we feature this time the Bulgarian bag. Like, Steve is such a random person, and he's getting such a random edit, and, I mean, he is just a, a random addition to the season overall, and his content just makes me go, what the fuck? But he also just seems like such a nice guy who just has trouble connecting with people. There's nothing wrong with being a bit of a loner, but when the rest of his content is a minute-long description of his shower, I'm just like, oop, awkward. But I guess it also kind of makes me laugh, too. But all of the fun quickly gets sucked out of the room as we do have to check back in on Laurel and Nicole as they're attempting to find a way to communicate without the sexual touching, which is just like, really, you can't be in a room without, like, doing something with each other? Like, ugh. <laughs> you guys are so horny. Now, Nicole says it's a game and she can't win if she doesn't communicate with Laurel, which... I agree, you don't want to just cut off relationships, but dear lord, do we have to keep hearing about them? Can we go find something else in this house to talk about? This week's daily is in two parts. The first is basically musical chairs in a stadium, and this season we really see Brad's lack of focus start to take a toll on him as he gets eliminated first when there was literally an easy spot for him to sit in. This whole round ends up being kind of useless though since it, you know, it only gives teams a 30 second head start, which is made up rather quickly, so, eh. Um, Ace and Nicole end up winning the challenge, while sadly our favorite couple, Cam and Leroy, end up in the bottom group, and we learn that it's going to be a double elimination episode, and I'm just like, dear lord, do not do it. Do not take them both out in the same episode, I will hate this season forever. Leading up to the elimination, we get some drama as Cara Maria and Jasmine are kind of targeting each other, and yet another fucking scene of Laurel and Nicole fucking at 1.30 in the morning. Like, do, do we have to always go back there? Now we get a scene of Brad in a handheld, which we'll just go ahead and sit here and use this for the next little bit of time. So I'm just going to babble for a little bit, because I, mean, I have no shame. Oh, dear lord, does this make me as bad as Laurel and Nicole? Okay, I guess we have to move on. Just one second more. Okay, now... 
And this next part here also starts the arc where Cam is determined to get her star, wanting to go in against someone who doesn't have a star so she can steal hers from Car Maria, meaning she wants Tina. And I'm just like, don't do it. Don't go after Tina. There's so many other people. Go after Flora. Go after Avery. Don't just leave Tina alone. Um, however, Car Maria sees through this strategy during the nominations, and after Adam speaks up about being kind of weird about just giving them what they want, Cam's plan gets blocked as Car Maria convinces Adam, Avery, and Jay to defy Flora and Ryan's votes and send in Jasmine and Veronica to save her star, which wasn't a bad move on Kara's part. Um, a pretty basic move, but you know what? Kara doesn't have the most successful strategy, I would say. Um, so when it works out for her, let's give her her stars, literally. Now for the men, the star holders are also vulnerable as Kefla and Steve are easily thrown in and you know they're just most on the outs here so it just makes sense and we finally get a physical elimination with the rope rumble challenge that involves them having to move a heavy rope to their opponent's side of the arena despite having the weight advantage over steve kefla struggles just a bit because his leg is just not in a great spot and sadly our oldest challenger is eliminated but you know it was amazing to see him come back this season and hopefully we see him in the future um he just didn't really have too much of a story and so hopefully they'll give him a story next time now for the women this episode attempts to give survivor 46's maria for most indecisive challenge winner of the year um you know is trying to go up for grabs for that because nicole decides she's coming into the challenge she wants her star, deciding first to face off against Veronica, but then Veronica convinces her otherwise and says that she was never working with Kara and there's no reason for her to go after her. So she decides instead to go after Jasmine, which is like, Nicole, it was an easy decision to start with. Like, what are you doing? But you know what? I agree with Cam. I'm not going to try to decode Nicole's thoughts because I could barely understand what Nicole says. So I'm just going to give all the credit to Veronica here for pulling that move out. And while I love, love, love Jasmine for the drama, I've got to be honest, I never go into these expecting Jasmine to make a final. So she's just one of those characters we enjoy for the time we have. And once again, Jasmine makes the most of it. But sadly, we'll be leaving at the halfway point. Episode 7 was a little bit eh, but we do get a nice scene here as we dive into Ryan's sobriety journey. While Ace basks in the glory of having a star given to him by Steve last episode for doing absolutely nothing. We gotta love this storyline from Ace, and I would love to be in the same spot. And we also get trivia for the challenge, which we always love. Now, Brad continues to be down on himself, especially when Ace decides at dinner to call out a challenge between Adam and Brad, incorrectly assuming Brad would want to go into elimination. But if you've read any of the postseason interviews, Brad was not in a great spot this season. And ultimately, Adam is just in a much better place to go into an elimination for the Cheat Codes challenge. And that's the challenge that we didn't get to see a couple episodes back here, which I'm so glad they brought that back as a side note here. But sadly, it means that Brad the Beard is eliminated. You know, and it's just unfortunate he was dealing with a breakup during the season because Brad is always one of my favorite challengers of all time. Obviously, we kind of knew something was up after he underperformed as a challenger in season 39. But, you know, I've always just felt a connection to Brad for whatever reason. He's just not one of those people I feel like on the cast here that's just here to just act up like he's always trying to do the right thing I feel like more often than not and it just makes me really appreciate him as a person and you know the last season I actually watched in my initial run of the show was cutthroat because I was just soaked to see Brad finally get his win and I thought at that point I had enough of the challenge so at least for that point, felt like everything had wrapped up. But now I think I'm on another mission here because I would love to see Brad get his second victory. And I do think he will have his time in the winner's circle at least one more time here in the future. And if there's anyone to use his experience to learn and grow, I do think that's Brad. So let's hope his next iteration will be his best yet. Episode 8 is more of the same as Laurel and Nicole is. They have to be more in front of the camera and involved in all the drama as Kara begins the episode saying that she's trying to be a good friend to Laurel by saying that she needs to separate herself from her ex and that she's ruining her game because of it. At this point, Laurel is ready for Kara Maria to go though and helps plot with Cam in an attempt to get Kara's star. They end up fucking it up though in <laughs> this daily challenge because it's like this weird like 
they can eliminate each other from the group basically by poking each other's balls out here. So there is a little bit of social strategy involved in it. But, I mean, come on, y'all. You already fucked that up here. <laughs> End up doing it to the point so Cam doesn't get to face off Kara directly, but decides she's going to take on my girl Tina, who, once again, is sadly getting sacrificed so Cam gets her star. And I'm like, why do my two favorites have to fight? Why? Um, in the challenge, though, Kara knows everyone is coming after her, and she tries to make her stand, but everyone just gets annoyed with Kara Maria instead, and she almost gets into a, a physical confrontation with Nicole, which at this point I was hoping that Nicole would throw a punch, but, you know, it was pretty mild, and it was broken up really easy, and nothing ever happens of it. We do, however, get a huge fight that we get from the previews as Kara Maria, Laurel, and Nicole... It, it just ends up with Laurel screaming at Kara that she interprets everything wrong, which is it's just so Laurel. She always gets so personal, and it's just really rude and extra and aggressive, especially towards Kara Maria. I will never understand the relationship between these women, and, you know, whenever they start to feud, though, I won't lie. I will always take Kara Maria's side, so if I'm biased, whatever, I don't care. I will never forgive Laurel for what she said to Big Easy in the hot tub during Cutthroat because it was just so unprovoked and cruel. So fight me for it. People grow, but I don't care. I I just, I have never liked Laurel for that. So will always be in the back of my mind, and I just don't feel like she's ever really progressed or shown that much growth from it. So just my opinion. If you think differently, feel free to comment. But you know what? I know plenty of people that will be on my side about this, because, ugh, the world. Anyway, the elimination challenge is pretty meh, too, as it consists of jumping on a trampoline while trying to memorize a board on the other side of the wall. You know, Cam easily wins the challenge and takes Kara's star just like she wanted, while sadly, we have to say goodbye to Tina. Why? She worked so hard for it. <laughs> Tina, again, is purely personality on these challenges, and I never truly expected her to do well, but Tina had such a fun arc this season. I mean, honestly, it could have been my favorite part of the season, uh, with just her inability to do anything right, but still finding success otherwise. Tina could be on every challenge, and I would be completely fine with it because she just makes me laugh, and she just seems so happy to be there all the time, you know? It's an energy we could really use on this show since it gets dark-sided so easily. I mean, just look at the er episode earlier here. Like, ugh. Like, we needed that levity from Tina here, so I'm so glad we got it. Honestly, the last like four episodes, you could definitely tell is missing that same energy with Tina gone here. So put Tina on every season and rig for her to get to a final now. Thank you. Now, episode nine actually could be the episode of the season in a lot of ways because it is the culmination of so many arcs while simultaneously pissing me off and making me realize the season will now have no great result. The Daily sees them compete in a male-female duo-style challenge to jump off of a platform to grab a ball multiple times to lower another hanging platform with stars attached. This actually looks like a lot of fun, and sadly, Cam is not over her postpartum depression worries to get over her fear of the challenge, which automatically throws her into the bottom immediately after just getting her star. So we go into this episode under the understanding that Laurel is ready to eat Kara's ego, which I mean, like, only Laurel would say something like that. And she wants to destroy her in the elimination challenge and take her star. So when Cam is initially up against Kamriya, we're all like, okay, let's see this third showdown between these rivals finally. It's been, like, hinted to us all season. It needs to happen. But, you know, as everything else this season, Lauren can't, Laurel can't even give us what we want after making us deal with all this toxicity and making out with Nicole for, what, nine episodes now, choosing to take her chances on just being there for one final round to get a star and let the two heavyweights go up against each other. Was it the smart move? Absolutely. This move for Laurel is exactly what I would have done myself. But does it piss me off that she led my girl Cam into elimination and then break her word to chicken out on a face-off that she likely still would have won? Yes. Yes, I am very pissed. And it just shows just how big of a game Laurel will talk and just doesn't follow through on it most of the time. Like, this woman is primed for a come up this season with all of her negativity, but spoiler alert, not only will she never face any adversity here, but she will also be rewarded for this behavior, which is just so annoying. Now, we get a kind of a lame elimination as well here too, where my two favorite powerhouse ladies face off to remove balls from a cage that is set over a small body of water. Cam kind of fucks up when she doesn't get all of her balls to the right side of her cage on her first go, and I don't know if Leroy was able to yell loud enough or if he even knew 
that she left all of her balls behind, but either way, Car Maria is just much more efficient and wins the challenge and takes her star back from Cam. And let me say, it's just such a crime Cam is not in the finals here because she literally dominated the strategic game from start to finish. It sucks that her decision to not compete in the daily ultimately led to her going home, but I still believe we're going to live in a world soon with a kill -a Cam victory. Obviously, she's in a place in her life now where she's having kids and is very brave to show up this season eight months after her kid's birth while she's still pumping. I mean, that's crazy. And so, you know, I think once Cam's family life settles down, you know, she's still young. I could see her really reinventing herself to come back as the full package to support her physical game to match her strategic game. And I cannot wait for that day to happen. Episode 10 is our final episode of the format, as we originally know, as the major source of tension comes from those without stars wondering if they'll have an opportunity to get a star, as the women's eliminations are over and there's only one more male elimination left. The daily challenge is goofy as fuck, requiring them to use a lasso to navigate their shopping cart to one side of a track to another. Now, this would be the type of challenge I would expect to see on, like, Big Brother, not the challenge, and it's also just, like, it, it didn't feel Feel like any of the earlier challenges were this goofy and I mean I don't mind if they lean that way but just like keep the tone consistent producers like am I supposed to laugh at your challenges or fear them make up your mind Anyway, Jay ends up crushing this challenge, just like he has in most of the dailies thus far, and I haven't really talked much about Jay this season because ultimately he's kind of irrelevant to the overall story, especially because he makes one of the dumbest moves possible under the fear of not getting a star, as he sacrifices himself into the elimination against Steve and saves Leroy from the challenge, but, you know, there isn't really a problem here otherwise of the fact that the challenge involves them removing colored tubes from the bottom of a tank and arranging them in order of tone. And Jay is fucking colorblind. So it's like, why the fuck would you put yourself in this situation? Like, <laughs> like what are you doing? Like, this is just so dumb. And it's like, Day, Jay, he was doing such a great job of redeeming himself from quitting his last season for not drinking that gross shake. But then you go doing this, boy. Like, what? I, I think Jay's legacy, sadly, will be just, you know, getting eliminated in just embarrassing ways. So please, Jay, if you decide to go back to the challenge, play some board games, play some Catan, play some Monopoly. I, I Just I, don't be so afraid of the strategy portion of it. Get more comfortable with it. Because the, the, that was just... Oh, that was not good. That was not good. So our penultimate episode is our last episode to feature any good challenges whatsoever for the rest of the season. And we get the aftermath of Steve's challenge win and the star transfer decision since he still had his star from the start. So he ended up transferring the star from his old BFF Adam to his new friend Ace, which, oop. Ace, again, literally has done nothing up to this point and gets another star back here while Adam is now all sorts of pissed off at Steve betraying their decades long friendship by taking away his star. And while I think Adam might be overreacting, you know, a tad, I can't blame him for being frustrated losing his star at the last minute, especially because TJ reveals that the traditional format is over and those with the stars are through to the finals, meaning Adam just missed out as Ace joins Car Maria, Laurel, Leroy, Nicole, Steve, and Veronica in the finals as they get to spend the day drinking and relaxing in TJ's RV, and they get to watch everyone else compete in the final challenge, because just as Laurel suspected and Jay incorrectly assumed, there are two more stars up for grabs in their final daily challenge that requires them to run a length and then tie a circular paddleboard, then use that paddleboard to paddle out to a star in the heavy ocean, dive down and grab a key, paddle back to shore, use that key to unlock a trough of slop, and dig through it to find a star. First man and woman to do so will earn their way to the finals. But before the challenge begins, Flora reveals that she's had enough, her body can't take it anymore, and I gotta say, I'm proud of Flora for lasting this long. You know, she's in her 50s. This is her first challenge in literally forever. I thought she was brave just for going as long as she did, you know? But, of course, TJ is not a fan of quitters and probably won't be having Flora back. But I think I'd be more surprised if Flora had any desire to come back. Because looking at her body, she looked beat up as fuck. <laughs> you know, like, she's definitely seen better days. But who knows? Maybe she's inspired to leave a life of fitness now and come back eventually as a challenge beast. Because she seemed to have a pretty okay social game. We also didn't really hear much from Flora though, so I don't really know, but you know, eh, is what it is. 
The final challenge begins and Avery and Ryan quickly fall behind, and it's pretty clear early on that they're both out of this challenge, as Laurel just has a crazy lead on Avery. While Derek initially had a huge lead during the run, but Adam slowly closes in on him during the paddle. Eventually, Derek and Laurel find their stars first, securing their place in the finale. As far as those who left here, Avery was probably the biggest surprise given she had some of the least experience on the cast, and she came in as a very surprising competitor, though. Losing to Laurel is nothing to be sad about, and I hope Avery is able to find ways to help pay for her brother's tuition. At the same time, I think Ryan kind of struggled to find his place truly in the narrative. While he was good at keeping himself safe, his strategy kind of backfires a little bit because Ryan isn't necessarily a challenger known for his strength in challenges, so never giving himself a chance to win a challenge that may have been more in his wheelhouse meant he lasts a long time, but ultimately he goes out at the very end with a bit of a whimper. And Adam, I think, actually had a pretty good season himself, although I'm not sure how to feel about how he reacted to Steve's decision here. It feels like such a petty thing to ruin a friendship over, but Adam also now has Avery, so in the finale, at least he found love, you know. I never really expected any of them to win, because this has felt like a very Car Maria versus Laurel narrative all season, and since we didn't get them in an elimination, it felt like it was going to come down to what happens here in this final challenge. And guess what? It begins this episode. There's actually a really fun lead up to the challenge when TJ picks everyone up in an RV and drives them to the final, and it's a really fun sequence. This is what I'm saying when All Stars does not know what to make itself of, because when it sticks to this campy ass tone, it's so perfectly cheesy like the older challenge seasons, and it feels like it would have really benefited this season to lean more into that, because this is what we want here, the nostalgia and the camp. But at the same time though too, there's also this side of here where we're trying to take things very intense, and the last few seasons, you know, we've seen very intense finals, so... I think we've all had these expectations that these finals should be intense. But we learned the format of this final will be a lot less strenuous as there will be a series of checkpoints alternating between challenges for reward and challenges for elimination. And at the end of night one, only four star holders would be left standing to go on to day two. In their first advantage checkpoint shooting star, the players are strapped to the back of a race car who takes them along a high speed course where they have a hundred paintballs to hit stars that are scattered along the course. This was by far my favorite challenge of the season and was such a strong way to begin this finale. Like I was just so excited for this, just based off of this challenge. I'm like, okay, this is this isn't the necessarily the most strenuous that we're expecting here, but it's going to be fun because these challenges are going to be really cool. Um, Leroy ultimately secures the advantage into their next checkpoint, which will be for elimination. It's called Electric Star, and they will need to maneuver a ring along a wire star and are shocked each time their ring touches the wire. The player with the slowest time will be eliminated from the final, and... This is also a really cool challenge. You know, Ace makes the choice to just strong arm his way through it and touch all the sides, which was hilarious to watch. While Veronica was super impressive because she barely even reacts to any of the socks that she gets. Leroy attempts to put fear into everyone by fake yelling after his run and is doubled down on when Nicole actually screams when she goes, which makes some players like Derek and Laurel overly cautious. Which we end up learning, uh, ending the episode here learning that Derek and Laurel, our two newest star holders, are ironically now up for elimination with the slowest time after being so cautious. But we get a cliffhanger ending before we can learn of all the shenanigans production is about to throw in here. And let me just tell you, I'm about to be angry here because... These shenanigans, th this is some shit here. This is some shit. So the season finale begins rather abruptly, just cutting back in where we left off, immediately eliminating Derek from the game. And this is also the moment this whole format goes to shit, because TJ reveals this season is all about friendships, as Derek now has to give away his star to one of his friends for an advantage on day two of the, the final if they are able to make it there. And apparently Derek and Laurel have been BFFs this whole season as we get a montage of their special moments, like when they won a challenge together and when they won their stars last episode together, which is like, what the fuck is this editing? Could we really not have had included any sort of scene earlier this season to show that Laurel and Derek were friends instead of under-editing Derek completely and giving Laurel far too much screen time with Nicole? I guess not. Anyway, happy Derek was able to make his goal of getting to the final in his sister's memory, but sadly, that will literally be all Derek really gets this season, but, you know, yes, we're doing it for the gays during Pride Month. 
Now, their next advantage challenge begins the downfall of any entertaining challenges for this finale, making me feel like they literally just overspent their budget in the last two challenges and didn't realize it until after this elimination. Their next challenge is called Spicy Foot, which, first off, what the fuck is this name? And second off, what the fuck is this challenge? Just having them use their foot to move a rope of peppers up and down? Like, why do these challenges get so stupid all of a sudden? Nicole wins it, unsurprisingly, because she's probably as intelligent as this challenge is, and she'll get an advantage in their next elimination challenge as TJ walks in wearing a saw trap built by a frat guy that they'll use in their so creatively titled elimination challenge, Balance for Survival. They will have to use this pulley system to tip a cup of water into their mouth so they could pull up a tube attached to them. And what is this fuck assery? Like, what kind of dumb fucking challenge is this for $250,000? Like, I cannot. You're telling me in one season they have to complete one of the most grueling courses ever where people die almost along the way. And this one they just basically play beer pong? I cannot, producers. This is so dumb. What makes it even more dumb is Leroy cannot figure out this pulley system and gets eliminated in one of the dumbest challenges ever. Like, this is some bullshit. Then it takes out the last person that I'm truly rooting for. Ugh. So gutted for Leroy. Just because, like, this could have been the challenge he really succeeded in. The edit made me really think Leroy had a really strong chance, at least to the point where he would get to the top four. So, you know... I do have to say, though, once Cam left, I did notice that Leroy's relevance to it did kind of disappear a bit. But that was only, like, two episodes, so I didn't really think it matters. But, you know, again, bullshit challenge, bullshit elimination. This elimination order is bullshit. Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Now, Leroy gives his star to Steve. We continue on with our night, and I wonder why I continue to watch this finale. Now... This this takes us to our final six, where they get their next advantage challenge, and we get a partner game called Hoseball, which I guess they're supposed to play three-way soccer with fire hoses. It's really hard to tell what the fuck's going on here. Like, it's just a lot of water, and it just keep, it's just keeps hard to keep track, and I'm pretty sure people are kicking the ball and spraying people in the face. Like, I know Nicole gets mad at some point and just starts spraying people in the face, which is just like... Oh, so mature, Nicole, but, you know, yay for Ace and Kara for winning, I guess. I don't really even know what was happening for that 5-10 to 10 minute period here. But we move on to our next elimination challenge, our final of the night, called Bluff Night, where they compete in one of three timed tasks to get the shortest uh, time of completion. Each task can only be completed twice, and Ace and Kara Maria get to basically start the order as their advantage. They both take the easiest challenge, Firearm, which is the only exciting challenge here that has them get decked out in a fire glove to set alight four star targets and then chuck a ball at them. Steve goes next and chooses Nailed It, which has him nail three nails into a piece of wood. Which... What is this low-budget stupidity? <laughs> I'm just like, come on. Uh, Veronica goes next and picks the equally stupid Marble Blast that just has our competitors roll a ball down a ramp through some random tiki-inspired decorations, which, where did the tikis come from? They're in South Africa. Why are there tikis here? Um, but anyways, they have to roll through the tikis and try to get it through a hole at the end of the course. Um, what are these challenges? Like, I know you need to find three things that are kind of, like, similar in, you know, the difficulty, but... Uh, <laughs> You've done so many great challenges. This is the best you can think of. This I, I I don't know. Anyway, Nicole also decides to do the dumb tiki challenge, leaving Laurel to pound the nails. Then it turns out the ball ramp course was the dumbest decision, as both Nicole and Veronica are eliminated here. And honestly, I, I mean I like the idea of this elimination, but these two tasks outside of the fire task were so fucking lame. And, you know, I've talked about What's-Her-Face enough in my disdain for her, so I'm just going to acknowledge how proud I am of Veronica for her performance this season. Veronica was a part of the first Road Rule season that I ever watched with Ayana and Yes in Semester at Sea, so I've always felt some sort of weird connection with Veronica, but she's had a bit of a rough time since she started the challenge. I'm glad she was able to reach her first final in a long time, and to be honest, she ultimately won the season, or had she ultimately won the season, then this format would have proved to me that really anyone could win it, and it wouldn't bother me so much, but here we are at the final four, and why does it feel like Kara, Maria, and Laurel were going to be in this endgame regardless? Steve 
completely proved himself in elimination countless times, so it's like, was there really anything gained from this format? Oh, Ace being here, yay! Oh, okay. Anyway, at the same time, Laurel was given two more fucking stars from Nicole and Veronica, so she's literally the last person from her alliance, separating herself from the rest of the group, as the friends Ace, Carmarie, and Steve seep closer together on the cargo net before they start day two of the challenge. And day two of the challenge is a bunch of bullshit too, because this challenge feels hardly deserving of being called a final challenge. They'll take a scooter down a hill to the star loop and group of tasks that are on each point of the star. They'll complete five laps of the star loop, which has them complete one additional task on the star with each passing lap. So the first lap, they complete the first challenge, which is eating a cockroach or a shot of fermented liquid. Second lap, they complete the cockroach or liquid task, and then complete the second task, which is a pipe puzzle. The third lap, they'll complete the first two tasks, and then stack some rocks in the third task, and, you know, so on. Adding the final two puzzle tasks in lap four and five. Only the top three, though, will be eligible to finish the final, as they'll then grab one of the three star handles and race to the finish line, using the handle to raise their flag. But... And the biggest bullshit twist of this final, it turns out every star they have will allow them to skip one task per loop. Which means since Laurel has four stars, she can literally skip the second pipe maze task on her middle three loops. Only having to complete it on her last lap as she saved her last star for the last task. Oh my god. This is so dumb. I think I've said bullshit, uh, you know, enough times here, but I'm pretty sure Laurel had more time or more stars here than than times I've said bullshit in this whole entire video. Anyways, and even with this huge advantage, Steve is right on her tail and actually passes her at the pipe puzzle because since she skipped it three times on her fourth time, she's having a hard time figuring it out. And since Steve's done it every single time, he knows it right away. However. In the moment that will sadly go down in blunder history, Steve fucks up, and his lack of final experience comes into play here as he misremembers the rules thinking he can use both of his stars on the final two tasks. So, when he uses his star on the easy fourth puzzle station, the producers make him run back to strap into the final task, which takes forever to get him attached. And during this time, Laurel and Carmaria both are able to use their stars on this final task and begin the race to the finish line. Ace ultimately cannot complete the star puzzle, and ultimately, Steve gets the final task done, eventually taking the final star handle and racing to the finish line as Ace is eliminated in fourth place, which I gotta say, for doing absolutely nothing this whole season, you know, other than being upset over the social game and having to vote out his friends, Ace was actually randomly funny, and I didn't mind him being here on this edition of the show. Um, obviously, his severe under-edit was never leading to a victory, but seeing clips of him randomly falling asleep doggy-style on the couch, or him releasing all the cockroaches at the end of the season, just kind of made me chuckle, so at least he had a couple moments here and there. As our final three race to the finish, we learn that sadly her lead is just too large to make up as Laurel crosses the finish line first and is declared the winner of All Stars 4 with an asterisk. Carmaria ultimately crosses the finish line in second place while Steve gets third place and they share the $25,000 each as they take home the rest of the $50,000 prize for crossing the finish. I'll start with Steve, because I was very surprised he lasted this long after being such a target from day one, so to see him being so close to winning this season was kind of tragic. Steve obviously isn't the most exciting TV, and they definitely had to stretch to find ways to keep him relevant, but I think I might have been rooting for Steve the most out of the finalists, at least I, I kinda was, just because like that would have just been such a great moment for him, I think, but sadly instead it becomes just a gigantic blunder for him, and he ends the game in third place, but you know, that's not bad because he still gets second place money. And obviously our runner-up, Carmaria, is always a joy to have on the challenge, and it's so nice to see her back. Granted, she's not perfect and clearly struggles with the social game. I don't necessarily think that's a negative thing, because because the challenge should not be entirely a social game, nor should someone win just because they had more friends and get eliminated at the right time. So everything, as far as I'm concerned, I would have been just as fine with a Carmaria win as well too, because she had her back up against the wall the entire season and still managed to make it up 
this far here. I mean, she had one star in the finale, and had things been equal, she probably would have beat Laurel here. So I am... It's it's hard to not really respect Kara's game, and I can only expect great things from Kara in the future moving forward, which sadly brings us to our winner, and yes, sadly I do say it, because it is Laurel. Also, I will start off by saying congratulations, because Laurel took advantage of every possible thing she could have done this season, and she made all the right strategic moves. But that doesn't necessarily mean I have to like her for her angry and aggressive way that she plays, or how she tends to make things unnecessarily personal. She's just a very mean person, and I cannot sit here and say I'm happy that the stupidity of the finale format played into basically just giving her the win after Laurel was stank all season. Like, I will say that thank god we do not have to live with, you know, any more Laurel and Nicole drama. Although, you know, they've already had it on on Twitter. Clearly, they hate each other, and we could all sit here in shock that they're clearly perfect relationship could no longer last but at least if that was going to happen have it happen on the show so at least we could get some payoff from it because like seeing them leave on like this happy ending i i could only hope that they look back at this and they just both cringe at at what happened here <laughs> but um yeah i'll just i'll be very honest here. this finale ruined any love i had for the season whatsoever perhaps my hatred wouldn't be that bad if anybody else had won especially someone who is actually an underdog and not just one of the strongest competitors in the history of the challenge but this format really struggled to commit to its intensity while ending on one of the worst finals i've ever seen the winner basically getting the victory for having shortcuts is just such a lame fucking way to win and i know again everybody's going to say laurel is a two-time winner with an asterisk now which sucks kind of for laurel too because she does deserve her win but it's always going to come down as this situation that you won because you had stars. You know, there was some really great drama, and this cast was truly legendary, but the outcome of the boot order is so fucking tragic, and it really just feels like one of those seasons where evil is rewarded, and there's just nothing satisfying in that ending. And I'm not one to necessarily rank a season based on its ending, but when the entire format changes at the last second, and that's basically what we've been leading up towards this entire season, I'm not here for it, and this season is, is exactly that. This format endgame just it did not feel like the challenge to me, so is it right for one moment to ruin the entire journey? Not necessarily, but when you force me to watch Laurel and Nicole fight and bicker for 12 episodes only for Laurel to get rewarded for her toxicity, nah man, I'm good. <laughs> We'll probably watch some of the Cam and Tina content, but much like season 39, the challenge ends with yet another disappointing winner that makes me question if we're really ever going to get a satisfying winner in this franchise anytime soon. And we all say that just as the cast gets announced for season 40, and we can only start praying now that that will be so much better than this. So... Sorry if you enjoyed All Stars 4, but it was not for me whatsoever. But I leave it up to y'all. What did y'all think of the Challenge All-Stars for? Did you enjoy it? Did you hate it? Did you enjoy that finale? Are you Team Kara or Team Laurel? And do you hate Laurel and Nicole's relationship as much as I do? Um, I'll still watch and cover the next Challenge season again, because season 40, it is going to be a pretty epic season regardless, just because it is just going to be a, a season, I think, of nostalgia. But please, dear Lord, let it be better than these other 2023 Challenge seasons. Please, dear God, please. Until next time. He's spilling the tea, y'all. This is Renegade, signing out. Bye! So I can go free all the cockroaches. You're free, bots! <laughs>